Well, everyone, it's time for us to go and take a look at the first generation iPad and see if this iPad is still worth buying in 2024. Now, spoiler alert, I don't think this iPad is worth buying anymore. I honestly don't think this iPad was worth buying probably for the last like 10 years, to be completely honest. But it's still kind of interesting to take a look at the, these like older products from Apple and see how they still hold up in this day and age. Now, if you do want to buy some iPads that I would recommend buying this year, links will be down in the description. You can get them from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outset of the iPad first generation, you have to remember that this particular iPad came out in 2010. So it was that, you know, 2010 year, I think it was around the same time that the iPhone 4 came out or the iPhone 4S came out. I think it was the 4. And this was a very monumental change from Apple. This was the first of its kind, you know, from Apple at that moment. And it's funny because there were rumors, and I think Steve Jobs even stated that basically the iPad, you know, was in his head before the iPhone. So Apple was actually thinking about making something like the iPad before they started making something like the iPhone, which is actually pretty insane. So that in and of itself was a very, very crazy thing. You'd never think that the iPad came first and the iPhone came second, but in his head, that's kind of what was going on. Now with the iPad first gen, on the front of it, you were basically getting that big display. It was a 9.7 inch IPS LCD panel, and it's a very good looking display. Even now in this day and age, it's actually still like a pretty good looking panel. You'd never think that Apple did like this good of a job at that moment, on this type of product, but that's exactly what was going on. And when I look at something like the iPad, you know, first gen, of course, this thing is lackluster in so many different ways because it is an older, you know, product. That's just kind of what happens. But I'm still actually pretty shocked by how good of a job Apple did with this particular product for its first gen. Usually there's like lots of weird issues and sometimes they mess up a lot and they do still do that. But like for this first gen iPad, it was actually pretty good. And that was a really big thing going on for this type of iPad. So that right there was one of the biggest things going on for it was its massive display, a very big stereotype at that time though was that this was basically like just a bigger iPhone. Like, why would you buy this and an iPhone? This is just a different iPhone. But I do think Apple did a really good job at kind of differentiating these iPhones with those ones, or, you know, this product with that product. And I think that's a very, very good thing going on here, that they were able to kind of create this market, you know, segmentation, where they were able to basically, you know, showcase very big differences between their phones and their tablets. And I think since then, all the other manufacturers have, you know, copied it. But I do think Apple did a great job doing it, not the first, you know, ones to make a tablet, but they did it probably the most successfully. Now on the bottom of this iPad, you're basically getting these flat sides, which were reminiscent kind of of like basically the iPhone 4 at the time, but you were also getting that 30 pin connector on the bottom as well. So with this type of you know, iPad, you're basically getting that older you know, 30 pin connector, which did end up changing just a few years later, but you know, still it's not that big of a deal. I think the iPad 2 and iPad 3 also had the same type of connector. And I think it eventually changed with the iPad 4, but still super cool that we had this type of capability here too. And that in and of itself was another pretty big thing going on for this type of iPad. On the back side, you were having the standard aluminum side. So it's that silver, you know, tablet that we were getting on the back side. And like I said before, I think this was a pretty cool thing going on here. It looked very good. It didn't really have too many problems here. And definitely if you were in the market and you wanted to go ahead and buy, you know, some sort of tablet, well, this thing was an option for you. It looked great. It looked good. And the best thing, I would say one of the better things going on for this particular iPad was how expensive it feels. Even now when I pick this thing up, for a 14-year-old you know, iPad, for a 14-year-old tablet, this thing still feels very expensive. There's tablets that came out in like 2015 that don't feel as expensive as this thing. In fact, there's probably tablets that came out in the last couple of years that don't even feel as good as this thing either. There's really good heft to it. It feels very expensive still. And although this thing, like I said before, I would not recommend doing anything with it that much, you know, at a high level, this thing is still a very, very good feeling, you know, tablet from that specific perspective. So that's kind of what I feel like on the outside of this particular iPad. And even compared to like the latest iPad Pros, this thing still is actually up there in terms of the way it feels. It's crazy you never think that, but it still holds up very well against those particular iPads. So that kind of covers it up on the outside. Now, there are no cameras on this iPad. This was like one of the only iPads Apple has ever made without a camera. I, I'm trying to think whichever other iPads they've made that do have that don't have cameras either. I would probably say, because even the iPad 2 has a camera, the, all the iPad minis have cameras. So there's probably some iPad they made, like maybe an iPad or one or something they have without a camera. But regardless, almost every single iPad they made has a camera. This one does not have it, which is probably another reason why I wouldn't recommend buying it. But probably the biggest reason why I would not recommend buying this iPad anymore is basically the software updates or lack thereof. This iPad does not give you any sort of software updates on this particular tablet. So, you know, it did, it was giving you software updates for a while, but then basically for, you know, a minute, they basically stopped. And then this was also probably one of the lowest 
not lowest supported iPads, but probably the iPads that had one of the lowest amount of, you know, software updates for the most part. So it didn't really, you know, last that long. It says it starts at iOS 4 and it ended on like iOS 5.1.1. I don't even know if that was the case, but regardless, you weren't really getting like endless amounts of updates or endless amounts of features on these particular, you know, iPads. So that right there is another very big thing going on. I would not, once again, recommend buying a phone or buying a tablet or buying anything that is no longer supported with software. And once again, that's kind of what was going on here. You were basically getting a product that was no longer supported with software. So take that as you will. But that's just, again, one of the other things that kind of, you know, is kind of going on here. So when I look at an iPad like the iPad Pros or the iPad Air, you know, 4 or whatever is available now, or iPad Air 5, the reason why I like those iPads so much beyond the performance is that those things are still supported with software. These things not supported with software and you're just kind of stuck with it as of this point. So take it as you will, but that kind of covers it up here as well. Now, in terms of the performance of this iPad, you know, I will give some credit to these type of iPads. I mean, you were getting kind of an interesting performing iPad at that time, but it was equivalent basically to what the iPhones were at that time. So inside of it, you were getting that Apple A4 chip inside with 256 megabytes of RAM. Now I'm going to say that again, the Apple A4 chip inside of it with 256 megabytes of RAM. Why was that the case? Like, why were we getting, you know, that, I mean, that, I understand. I mean, that's what the iPhones were at the time, but that is a very low amount of RAM to have inside of a, you know, iPad. And that is a very old chipset. But like I said, this is a very old iPad. So at that time, it was very competitive. It was basically what you were getting on like the latest ones. And that's just kind of what happens again. When you were getting something like the iPad 1, you were getting an, a, a bigger iPhone at that time, but it was very nice having that bigger display, you know, kind of gave a lot of capability and everything to this, which was really cool. But I will tell you with something like the iPad, you know, one, when you look at it nowadays, it is a fairly outdated, you know, iPad. I think that's the best way to put it. But for a minute though, this thing was pretty good in terms of performance side. And I think that's something that's really cool going on here too. Like you were getting like a fairly good performing type of iPad, which at the time was very cool. It was the first of its kind. So I don't think Apple was going to do anything crazy, but I do think if they kind of gave this like a kind of like its unique feature beyond than just being a bigger iPad, I think the stereotype of tablets would have changed probably a little bit earlier, but that was probably the biggest thing that this iPad kind of had to kind of fight was that, hey, this is not just a bigger iPhone. This is not just a phone that's just, you know, a bigger size, you know, that you could do the same thing on a phone. And I would definitely say for the last couple of years, Apple's done a really good job at kind of showcasing, at least for the last, you know, three years, probably since 2010 to maybe 2013, Apple did a tremendous job kind of showcasing, hey, like, you know, this is what, uh, you know, an iPad is and this is what an iPhone is. They're completely different products. And I think Apple did a really good job kind of showcasing to us what the differences were. Of course, it's not perfect. And of course, there's always going to be issues and stuff that kind of go along with creating a new product. But I would tell you for the most part, I think the iPad 1 is a legend. It's so interesting. I love talking about this iPad. I would not recommend buying this iPad unless you're, it's like a collector's item or something. Otherwise though, I think this iPad is not worth buying, but it's still a very interesting iPad for sure. And I'm still a fan of the way this iPad is in some ways. So that kind of covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, please let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.